Since we are in a theater, I will also say those of you who came for the upper school production of Our Town by Thornton Wilder, you're going to be very disappointed. For those of you, however, who came to hear about one of the most impactful decisions going to be made by town council over the next five years, you're in the right spot. So thank you for joining us tonight. As you have seen these screens go through, we have a presentation for you that involves a number of speakers. I will be introducing them as we go through. I do want to point out for you who can't stay the full length of time or for the Q&As that we have at the end of the session. There are a lot of frequently asked questions and other information at the tables in the lobby when you go out. So make sure you either stay and ask your questions or pick up that information on the way out. Because there are several organizations here who are 501c3s and we are nigh on to campaigning season and election day, I'm not going to provide space for candidates or existing public officials to make comments. They can obviously ask questions at the Q&A at the end. I do, however, want to acknowledge those public officials who are here in the room. I think I ball hawked everybody. We have Renard Carlos and Jay Hero from town council. Jay, you want to raise your hand and Renard's down there in the front. Thank you both for being here. Was there any other council member came in that I didn't see them? Sean Polster, I beg your pardon, Sean. I think of you as Rappahannock's emergency manager. <laughs> Sean Polster in the back of the room there. Also from the Board of Supervisors, we have Holder Trumbo. Holder, if you'd raise your hand. Thanks for being here tonight. And Parker County's Commissioner of the Revenue, Eric Maybach, is around there somewhere. There he is at the back raising his hand. Thank you. We have two candidates for town council, Paul Mooney and Dave McGuire, over here in the front. And lest our tax council get on my case, that's going to be the extent of my engagement with politics for the evening. So we're going to move on and talk about the subjects at hand. Again, thank you all for being here. We have a series of presenters. I'm going to take the role of moderator and introduce them to you. They're going to come up on stage and give you their presentations. All of the presentations you're going to see are going to be available online. So if they go too fast or you want to read those little tiny bits of printing that you can't read at this level of screen, don't worry. You'll get access to them tomorrow or the next day. We're also recording by a video and sound recording all the events of tonight, so you'll be able to go back and look at it, share it with your friends. Um, I think that's it. We good? We're going to jump into it. We're going to talk to our first speaker tonight. Kevin Raimondo is the president of Citizens for Fauquier County and a member of the Land Trust of Virginia. Prior to starting his second career in 2016 as an advocate for preserving open space and rural heritage in our area, he spent a majority of his career as a senior communications and public relations executive for Raytheon, Goodrich, and Westinghouse. Kevin? My challenge tonight is not to knock that off the podium. I, I think we have a video. Um, we thought we'd show a video just to kind of help everybody understand why we're here. Go ahead, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. And if you could put up my title chart, please. Okay, that'll work too. So uh, I'm president of Citizens for Fauquier County. <clears throat> our organization, our mission is to protect open space, preserve historical resources, and support agriculture. Uh, my job tonight is to basically set the table for the presentations you're about to see. I'm going to cover things at a fairly high level and then uh, the presenters that follow after me will drill down on the issues that are most important uh, as we think about this situation. The title of my talk is Wrong Use, Wrong Place, and Wrong Way. And that may be obvious to some of you why I chose that title. I hope at the end of the presentation it'll be crystal clear to everybody. Uh, the basics chart there, Kevin. Okay, so Amazon's desire to build this data center is not by right. 
What does that mean? That means they have to go through a rigorous process with the town, a process that includes involving the public through a series of public hearings. And you get an opportunity to weigh in. This is a big facility. This is 220,000 square feet on 42 acres. It's prominent. You won't miss it. It's next to the uh, Country Chevrolet. It's at the northeast gateway to the town. And um, this particular facility will require a significant power infrastructure involving power lines coming across the county, a substation adjacent to the facility on eight acres. And of course, that's if the project's approved. If the project's not approved, then the issue with the power towers and, and the, that all uh, goes away, at least for now. Uh, and this last point's important. This isn't just about one data center. This is about this data center and all the ones that we believe are inevitably going to follow. And you'll understand that as we go on. <clears throat> Next chart, Kevin. So, more at risk than ever. I'm a pretty straightforward individual. I don't exaggerate. But if you care about the small town characteristics of Warrington, and the rural countryside we all love in, in Fauquier, this is not an exaggeration. So our small town appeal, the countryside's at risk with this. Um, we've all seen what has happened in Loudoun and in Prince William County with respect to data centers and rapid development. We could be next. We believe this. if this is approved, we will be next. And apart from compromising what matters to us in terms of the aesthetics of where we live. There are significant noise and visual impact issues. The project is inconsistent with Warrington's comprehensive plan. And I'm not exaggerating when I suggest that this is the most consequential land use decision that the town will make, has made in decades, if not in all of, all of time. So really, really important. So it's really, really great you all are here to understand what we have to share with you. Uh, next chart, please. So let's talk about wrong use. So in April of 2021, the Warrington Town Council approved a comprehensive plan. And under that comprehensive plan, the site that is now targeted for this data center was destined to be used for mixed use. What does that mean? Or mixed development. That means retail. That means commercial. It means jobs, it means restaurants, it means things that, it means more economic development potential, it means things that we could enjoy, and it certainly has uh, more potential in that regard than, than a data center. <clears throat> the town got thousands of inputs in the process of putting together this comprehensive plan. The mayor even said, this is your town, your neighborhood, and your plan. So Mr. Mayor, why not stick to the plan? One of the things that I find amazing was that the, the very night that they approved the comprehensive plan, the town council also put into motion the effort to change the zoning to allow this data center to be uh, possible. Uh, the other thing that I find amazing is after three years of doing a comprehensive plan, that comprehensive plan is virtually silent on data centers. And you look around in Loudoun and in Prince William, it just puzzles me how a comprehensive plan could miss the most significant development activity going on all around us. Next chart, please. Okay, so wrong place. This is going to be, if it proved, this is going to be Warrington's newest landmark. Citizens and visitors will be greeted by a 50-foot high structure on an elevated site. This data center will be visible for many parts of town and parts of the county. Eight neighborhoods and retail commercial areas will also be uh, affected. Now, on this, on this uh, visual, uh, can you see the data center there, kind of in the middle there on that peninsula? See all those orange areas? This is a study that PEC did that shows where this data center would be visible from areas in the town and the county. Next chart, please. <clears throat> Staying with the theme of wrong place. Noise in the neighborhoods. We all know that data centers generate a lot of noise and vibration. 
this one is no different. Uh, our our team has done a tremendous job looking at all the looking at the no, looking at all all the issues, frankly, but particularly noise. And <clears throat> um, we've looked at the Amazon noise study and determined it was flawed. We think that the fact that we determined it was flawed and that became visible to others was part of the reason why a work session scheduled for September to discuss, among other things, the noise study was postponed. So the facility itself generates a lot of noise, and then you have the issue of the backup generators. They also, they're used intermittently just to test to make sure they're, they're, they're operational if need be. They're noisy. There are 657 homes and businesses within 2,500 feet of this data center that will be impacted. And the science is coming out that indicates that these circumstances of noise and vibration are causing health consequences, including uh, insomnia, stress, and anxiety. In fact, one of our uh, individuals who will be speaking based on personal experience, I think we'll talk to that a little bit later. Uh, next chart, please. I'm going to stay on the wrong place theme. So let's talk about those power towers. Dominion Energy has communicated their interest in building power lines across the uh, eastern part of the, uh, the county. Um, those power lines will transmit a significant amount of power uh, from 110 foot high towers. By our calculation, there will be enough power through that infrastructure to provide electricity for not just this one data center, but for up to 20 of comparable size. So clearly, there are big plans for data centers in our area, and this is the first one we have to stop. The routing of these transmission lines is unclear, and the county won't make that, be able to make that decision, and the town won't make that decision, the state of Virginia will make that decision. There's also been some speculation, and it's purely speculation, that the power lines could be buried. Some portion of these power lines could be buried. That ain't gonna happen. It's possible, very unlikely. Next part, please. <clears throat> I'm sorry, there's slides, right? <laughs> I'm from the defense industry. We call them, we call them charts. Uh, so this special use permit should not be approved. So in this chart, we kind of go through the pros and cons. And yes, there are some reasons to consider it. One is money, lots of money, potentially lots of money. But we have not been able to determine how much money. And we've talked to the town, and I'm not sure they understand how much money. Maybe they do. But uh, the industry is very good at, as most businesses are, at minimizing their tax impact. This industry is no different. So question mark, how much tax revenue? Another pro in favor of this proposal is less traffic. And I think it's, it's clear that this data center with 50 or less jobs is going to generate less traffic than perhaps the mixed use development that was targeted in the comprehensive plan. That's a fair comment. Okay, but the cons, my gosh, the cons so much outweigh those, those positives. First and foremost, a special use permit, there are two basic requirements. The first is that <clears throat> it is consistent with the comprehensive plan. It's not. We talked about that. The second top requirement is it does no harm. So when you think about human health and safety, you think about quality of life, something that is a, considered under SUP can't violate that, okay? But we know this will. We know about the towers. We know about noise. We know about view sheds. Uh, we know about the potential for uh, more of these. And quite frankly, and I don't mean any disrespect to the town council, I don't think they've done the work. They need to do more work on this. They need to do analysis. They need to involve the public. Uh, this is too important not to do properly. Next chart, please. Okay, wrong way. Let's talk about wrong way. Let's first talk about Amazon. So Amazon helped draft the, cent uh, the data center zoning amendment. And we know a lot of this because we've uh, asked the town, and the town has given us a lot of information based on the Freedom of Information Act requests that we've submitted. 
Uh, so Amazon helped draft the zoning or, uh, amendment. They required non-disclosure agreements from town officials. They hired the town manager, a town manager who was very much at the center of everything happening in the town, including this data center situation. They hired her two, about two weeks, I think, after she left her post in the town. And then, lo and behold, they completed the purchase of the Blackwell site within a month of when the town council approved the zoning change. Warrington. They ignored the comprehensive plan. They don't appear, from what we know, to be using any outside experts, other than possibly Amazon, to fully evaluate the, uh, the situation and the impact and the consequences. We have not found uh, town council or members of the planning commission to be particularly communicative, at least in our efforts, to share information with them and to meet with them. And um, it's interesting that um, sometimes you, you hear things from members of, of, of the town that tend to discount different organizations and we're a special interest group. I can tell you, Citizens of Fauquier County and Protect Fauquier and Piedmont Environmental Council, we're not special interest groups. You're our interest. Forty percent of the officials who will who have been involved in the decision making regarding this, this uh, special use permit, they won't be around when this thing is voted on. That's interesting. Uh, and we could have a new mayor. So, question, given all this, I think we should tell the town officials to deny this special permit. One more chart. I think we should also tell them to require Amazon to submit a complete application. They haven't yet. To postpone any decision until a new planning commission and town council are in place. To conduct an impartial review to understand how Amazon and possibly others exerted undue influence in the process. And by all means to inform residents about, the, about any proposed data center. And it sure would be nice if we knew from the town what their larger plan is relative to data centers. It's not just this one, I can tell you that. Uh, thank you for, for being so attentive. Uh, as I said before, there'll be other presenters that are gonna drill down on, on the points I've covered. I haven't taken, I hope I haven't taken too much time. And again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, as he just indicated, there will be now a series of presentations drilling down into each one of those broader subject matters that he brought up. I'll, I'll introduce our next speaker, my colleague at the Piedmont Environmental Council, Julie Bolthouse, who's been there 12 years. She's our Director of Land Use. She comes to us after a Master's Degree in Urban and Regional Planning and Natural Resource Management. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm going to drill into the lack of transparency that took place in this process and why many of us feel like we've been, been cut out of the process. So, oh, where's the clicker? There it is. So, first, I want to go into what did we know? What was publicly disclosed? What was publicly known? In the summer of 2021, a text amendment um, was passed allowing data centers in the town of Warrington with the approval of a special use permit. No applicant was indicated as initiating it. And then in September of 2021, the property behind Country Chevrolet was bought by Amazon. The press and organizations like PEC and CFFC reached out to the town to find out more about the application and if a transmission line would be needed. In fact, we even wrote an op-ed, uh, PEC did, about will this need a transmission line? How much water will be required? We need answers to these questions. There was quiet, nothing, for about eight months. Then Dominion started reaching out to groups in March and held a public meeting in April of 2022. But what happened in between? So PEC filed a FOIA request, which is a Freedom of Information Act request, to acquire the emails between the staff of the town and between the applicant and their consultants and other agencies that might have been involved, like Dominion. 
to find out what happened in between. What we found was that the legal representative for Amazon, Walsh Kalushi, reached out to the town manager in February of 2021 and requested the zoning text amendment on behalf of a specific property, which is completely counter to what we were hearing during the zoning text amendment. There was a specific property and also data centers more globally in the town. They appear to have been involved in the drafting process, as Kevin mentioned, sending a draft of the zoning text amendment to the staff indicated that it need, needs a little bit of work, but maybe we can get on a meeting and work on it. The staff signed on to non-disclosure agreements with Amazon in June. And then Amazon met with commissioners and council members asking that the meetings be limited to no more than one or two at a time. This is significant because it purposely avoids the public meeting requirements and any minutes being taken. Key questions were raised about additional data centers and power requirements, water usage, building size, and revenue. All the answers were provided by the town manager and they were choppy and lacked any supporting evidence or documentation. A lot of it was considered proprietary, like the revenue generation. They did give some figures, but they couldn't give how they calculated though because that was all proprietary. That a number of meetings were happening with Dominion months prior to any public disclosure of the study area that they were considering for the routing process. So that's what we discovered during the FOIA process. So why does this matter? Well, it's a business deal, right? We don't need to be involved in the process. The public doesn't have any role in that. Well, we, we kind of do. That's why we have those seats in the front of the town council chambers with that little podium for us to stand at and to comment on these things. We do have a role in this process, and we're <laughs> supposed to have a role in this process. So there, there were statements. So the reason that this matters is that the statements were not scrutinized as they would be if they were made in a public forum. Things like the revenue projections or the statement that Amazon doesn't need a substation for the initial phases but will need it in the future. I mean, that, that honestly, as a planner, that's like having a residential development and then saying that, well, we're not going to evaluate the, the tra transportation impacts because those houses aren't going to be filled up initially. It's going to take a while for them to sell. That doesn't make sense. You're going to need the substation. You're going to need the power. So you can't say that, well, at full build out, we would need it. But anyways, NDAs by the staff um, signing on and having those NDAs with Amazon causes them not to be, allows them to be forthcoming with each other, but causes them to not be as forthcoming with the public. It also creates a feeling of us versus them internally because they're, hindered from what they can actually share with the public and because they are working on this this deal internally it, it creates this sort of feeling of well you know this is our project and we're, we're trying to get it through and it cuts the public out of the process because we don't know what the facts are because the facts aren't shared with us Basically, what I'm trying to say is that openness and transparency in local government is crucial to operating a good and just government, and this has to change going forward. Thanks. Uh, our next speaker is going to talk about the power line realities and impacts. Uh, Spencer Snakert is the president of uh, Protect Fauquier. I didn't know Spencer before this controversy arose. She and her family own a home on the border between Prince William and Fauquier counties. Um, the real motivating factor for her was that two of Dominion's proposed power line right-of-ways would have taken down most of the forest around her home. The lady is angry. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, we bought 10 wooded acres right on the border of Fauquier thinking we're safe. Fauquier is rural. They guard their ruralness like we're protected forever. Yeah, right. So um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be speaking this evening about the power line realities and impacts. And so I want to start off by showing what we're talking about here, what's at, what's at stake, what we're up against. So one of my neighbors, when they first heard about this, said, what's the big deal? We've already got power lines there. I don't even know what this is all about. 
We are not talking about the 30 foot tall wooden distribution lines that you see all over town. We're talking about these babies, 110 foot tall steel industrial power towers, monstrosities um, that if you've been up recently up 29 to 66 and seen the new towers there, those are a result of the fight that Haymarket had with Amazon about this, where they got three miles buried and another couple miles above ground. And that's what we'll be looking at. So um, one of the big misconceptions here is Dominion wants to, ha Dominion and Amazon both want us to think like, oh, we want to be good citizens. We're proposing all these routes. They're going to be underground. It's all going to be good. But this is just kind of a summary of some things I'm going to show you some other pictures and go more in depth on. But while Dominion proposes the route, the SCC in Richmond, which is the State Corporation Commission, they are the um, the legal body that will decide ultimately where it goes. And even in Haymarket, when there was narrowing down of, I think, two different, one, two, one to two routes near the end that they said, okay, these are the ones that Dominion and the citizens want, the SEC actually came out of left field with a completely different option and said, no, we think it should be this other place instead. So Dominion can propose all they want and talk all they want and show all the routes they want to say it's going to be underground or different places, but ultimately the SEC in Richmond, who has no connection to our town or county, they decide. Um, also, a misconception about, again, the undergrounding or above grounding lines will likely be above ground. I'll tell you more about that why in a minute. And these lines will destroy our rural landscape and lower our property values, all at our cost for Amazon's benefit. So let's take a look at some of these a little more in depth. As I said, D Dominion can propose the routes, and this is one of the latest maps of theirs showing all these different directions. Um, I'm one of the lucky ones where the pink and the purple split. I have two options of how my property could be ruined. So um, Dominion proposes routes, but as I said, the SCC in Richmond decides the route, and the SCC and they decide whether it's above ground or below ground. And they make that final decision on the routes and the types considering a matrix with a few factors. The cost, because ultimately this cost is paid by us, the rate payers. If you have power for your home or your business, you will ultimately be paying for these multi-million dollar projects that are happening all over the state to get these data centers connected. So we, the, the rate payers, are the ones paying for this. Um, time to construct and viability is taken into consideration. Operability and reliability. Now, let's look at the reality. So according to Dominion Energy, underground transmission lines cost four to 10 times more than overground. So cost doesn't seem very much in our favor there for underground. They take longer to build underground, so time to construct is kind of getting knocked off the board there. They have additional operating restrictions. This is all according to Dominion Energy's website, by the way, so operability is a factor. And they can take, quote, several weeks to over a month to repair. So um, as far as reliability, they don't like that very much either for underground. Virginia has 6,600 miles of transmission lines, roughly. This, again, is according to Dominion's website. Only 1% are underground, one. So when we say lines will likely be above ground, it's based on facts here and the statistics and what, what we already know Dominion does and what the SCC does, what the SCC decides, because the SCC is trying to save us, the ratepayers, money by not paying the extra cost for undergrounding. So this is also a quote off of Dominion's website. In all cases, Dominion Energy has constructed underground transmission lines because no feasible and or cost-effective overhead alternative was available. We have feasible overhead option and we have more cost-effective overhead option. It's not looking good for us. So barring a miracle or a very long and costly fight like in Haymarket where they told Dominion, this is going to be the most expensive, longest fight of your lives, and they stuck to it. Four years, they fought Dominion and Amazon for this at a cost of hundreds of thousands of dollars to get three miles buried. So barring a miracle or a very long and costly fight, underground lines are not likely. All right, let's talk for a minute about what happened last night. If any of you were there or heard or watched the video, if you're going to hear in future news stories, Beware Amazon's games. This was a quote last night by John Foote, who's the attorney, the representative for Amazon, the applicant for their special use permit. John Foote said last night, and I went back and listened to the tape and transcribed this word for word, so this is what he said. 
Dominion will continue to evaluate electric supply solutions, including undergrounding options, and AWS, Amazon Web Services, has agreed to cost share any such solution that relates to undergrounding distribution lines connecting the substation to the data center. Now, we said that all somewhat quickly. Yeah, any reactions there? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he said it somewhat quickly, and I was, I was there in the room last night, and I will admit the word cost share certainly piqued my, piqued my interest, caught my ear. I'm like, oh, they're talking about cost sharing. Maybe we've got a little bit of a chance here on something. So let's just break this down. First off, um, undergrounding options, again, Dominion doesn't decide. The SEC and Richmond decide. So Dominion can act like they're looking out for us, but the SEC is going to decide, and based on all those factors we saw, it is 1% in our favor to be above ground, I mean to be underground. Also said AWS has agreed to cost share any solution that relates to undergrounding distribution lines. By the way, I think they're responsible for that anyway. I, I don't know for certain with Dominion Energy, I'm a Novec customer, and when I built my house on my 10 acres of raw land, I had to pay to get power to my property. I had to, get, to pay to get at least a portion of that distribution line to my property, as any of you have. Has anyone here, did anyone here have to pay for their own to get power if you're on a mountain or somewhere out in the country? Oh, quite a few. So um, Dominion Energy might have slightly different calculations than Novec does, but again, this is about a distribution line, which is not what Amazon needs. Amazon would need multiple distribution lines to provide the power that's needed, which is why Dominion has said they need a transmission line. So because they are a bulk load user, they need this larger line, which I will point out, as was mentioned previously, could be 10 to 20 times more than this particular data center needs, but one distribution line, like to someone's house, isn't gonna cut it. And that's because I believe, Julie's gonna be up again later, I wanna say it's double the power of all of Warrington is what this one data center is gonna use. Double the county too, or the town? The town. the town, double the power use of the town to run this one data center. So anyway, beware the uh, silver tongues, huh? So, <laughs> so lines are 99% likely to be above ground since we know only 1% goes underground. Virginia, um, as I said, only has 1% underground. We've got feasible cost-effective alternatives. The town and county can't require it to be buried um, legally. They just, they, again, the SEC decides and they will do it based on cost and other factors. Um, and even if the town or county pay for it, it would be a costly fight, like Haymarket fought for four years to get part of the local jurisdiction to pay for those three miles. Um, the pilot program is done. That's how Haymarket got theirs buried. There was a pilot program set up for, I believe, two locations. Haymarket was one of them, and that is now done. And distribution lines are unlikely, as um, even if they could run multiple distribution lines, Dominion said at a recent fuck your county board of supervisors meeting that they don't have the hookups for it. The current substations don't have the capability to connect more lines into it. They would have to expand the substation and they don't have the land to expand the substation. So I got a little ahead of myself there. So let's just sum that up by saying Dominion and Amazon's underground recommendations are a PR stunt. Don't fall for it. If Amazon is approved, we'd be looking at miles and miles of 110 foot tall steel power towers through town, the countryside, and our homes, which would completely destroy our rural landscape, both to and from town. This is a mock up that we had done a computer drawing based on the height that the trans, it's done to scale, the height of the transmission lines. And you can see that they're about double the height of the hardwood trees, the full grown hardwood trees, um, which by the way is about four times the height of your typical two story home. So if you get one of these babies running behind your house or through your yard, it's gonna be fun. Um, these are photos of existing lines in Prince William County off Vint Hill Road. These just went in a couple years ago, and I remember as they were going up, all of us that live off Vint Hill going, holy Lord, what is going on over there? They are monstrous. Lines, in addition to that, will decrease our property values. According to the National Association of Realtors, property, uh, power lines, transmission excuse me, transmission lines have been proven to lower property value by as much as 40%. So if you get these lines coming into your house and you decide this stinks, I'm out of here, I'm gonna sell, you're likely to get up to 40% less for the sale of your home. Now that is the high end of the range, I will admit. Um, but take a look at this. Given the alternatives, what would you choose? I know there's a really dark picture. I wanted to get another one, but it's been rainy the last, or cloudy the last couple of days. On the left, you can get the idea of the scale of one of these towers. In the red box is a big, beautiful, custom brick colonial house. 
that tiny little red box under the tower of the towers. And just to show you, I didn't make that up, that there really is a house there. It's blown up over here. You can kind of see through the, the, the bad quality of the picture, there's a house there. So um, the average, we did a study with, within Protect Fauquier. We have a number of members who are realty professionals, some of whom even specifically appraisal, realty appraisal professionals. And um, they did a very extensive search through the county and town GIS, went through and pulled up everyone. They did this incredible process of pulling up everyone's um, assessed value and took a look at, based on the lower end of the range of what the Realty Association says the loss is, and the average per parcel loss was $88,000 to $136,000. You want to sell your house at $88,000 to $136,000 less than you would have without power lines? Unless we get new legislation to require bulk load users to pay to bury their own lines, which is pretty unlikely, that would be a, a whole project of many years unto itself. So unless we can get companies like Trillion Dollar Amazon to pay for their own lines, we are paying in numerous ways. The best way to stop, to stop this madness is to urge the town council to deny Amazon the special use permit. Thank you. John Liver, who lives in Gainesville and who spent the last couple of years helping Prince William County and folks in Prince William County assess the existing data centers impacts and the, and the uh, of noise and the new data centers that are proposed and are coming in. Uh, he comes to us after uh, being educated at the United States Naval Academy, a career with the United States Navy, a second career with NASA. Depending on how you're counting, this is turning into another career for him. So Dr. John Liver, thanks for joining us. Good evening. I am John Liver, and I, uh, yes, I really am a retired rocket scientist. Uh, the PhD that I earned was based on a lot of the work that I did at NASA, which was in, it's called computational science and informatics, basically modeling engineering types of studies. So I've been a volunteer in Prince William County working on noise, finance. Yeah, I treated finance as just another engineering discipline. And, uh, staffing and those types of things. I've done several of them and now noise is what I've been focusing on for Prince William County and I was invited to come down and help you all down here. Uh, the slides that I'm going to show tonight and there's a full report and some other backup materials, even my script, uh, will be on the website tonight so I know there are a couple eye charts involved in this, uh, in this presentation tonight. The work that I've been doing for Prince, in Prince William County for their data centers on analyzing for these types of noise analyses, the staff of Prince William County cannot do those types of analysis. Not won't, cannot do it. I suspect you have a similar lack of ability here in Fauquier County and in the town of Warrington. Uh, but I got involved because as residents, I feel it's our duty to become informed and to let our leaders know that we the people, I've heard that someplace before, are really the ones who should decide what's best for our own communities. So let me start out with a little background on what is noise. First, the definition there at the top from the dictionary is that noise is a undesired sound that interferes with our hearing. As humans, our evolutionary growth started to develop in two primary frequencies, the 1,000 hertz frequency range and the 600 hertz frequency range. 1,000 hertz is a baby's crying. We've all heard babies crying at 3 o'clock in the morning and you wake from a dead sleep to hear it because our brains never go to sleep with regards to noise. We're always listening for noise. The 600 hertz range is the sound that predators make when humans used to live in tents and caves. So that is another one that, that really attracts our fight or flight type of analysis. So because our brains never turn off our audio system at night, 24 seven, your brain's being fed with noise. So you never really sleep. You never really can put things away. And oh, by the way, another 1000 Hertz signal that you're all familiar with, the dreaded alarm clock. <laughs> so as a result from this 
fight or flight instinct being on all the time and causing what they call a cortisol reaction is it, our brains have sleep deprivation, anxiety, depression, concentration, and heart conditions. Gee, uh, doesn't sound like a lot of fun. So how loud is too loud? Let me look up here and point out a couple of these to think about. 60 decibels right here is your modern standard B-flat garbage disposal. Turn your garbage disposal on and stand there for five or 10 minutes listening to it. I dare you. 65 decibels is where you go into a restaurant, it's too loud to have a conversation. You feel like you've been yelling at whoever you were trying to have a nice dinner with. And there around 70 decibels, I have a Dyson vacuum cleaner at home, a pretty nice one, but look at the range, it's in the low 70s of decibels. Try turning on your vacuum cleaner. Stand there, let it run for an hour, and sit in the room and try and read a quiet book. You can't do it. So why are we worried about noise for this data center? This is a chart, you saw it earlier. This is, shows in the, in the blue dots all the residences that are within half a mile of this data center site. Uh, that's roughly the town line up here. And due to the intensity of the noise, you're going to hear it up to about two miles away from the, from the site. Two miles, that sound will be audible. In this half mile region, it's going to be up in those ranges that I was just pointing out on the, uh, on the previous chart. So how do we control noise? Noise is controlled. You have both the Town of Warrington noise ordinance and you have the Fauquier County noise ordinance uh, that will both apply. Amazon has not admitted that the Fauquier County noise ordinance will apply because they're saying this is inside the town limits. Well, the, the noise is going into the county area. Now, one thing to be con that is a difference between the two ordinances that you need to be aware of so you don't get confused is the town warrant, the town ordinance uses a term called DBZ. Z is another way you say it. It's the actual measure of the noise energy. It's a wave of uh, there. The Fauquier County uses a weighted measure called DBA. DBA is what our, our human hearing interprets. DBZ is the, the raw amount of energy. So how did I come up with all of this type of analysis that I'm going to show you here in a few minutes? I went and I actually measured three data center sites in the Manassas area and one in Arcola up in Loudoun County. These are all very typical sites. Two of them actually are owned by Amazon. The other two make almost identical noise, identical frequencies. For your warrants in AWS data center at 500 feet away, that's barely to Lee Highway on this south side, you will get 62.8 decibels, 24 seven, 62 and a half decibels. When they turn on their generators, generators make about 95 decibels a piece. And there are 22 uh, diesel generators there. So what I did is I picked 21 sites pretty much at random at different distances around the area to map that half mile radius. And then I analyzed the amount of noise that would be generated uh, on the major roads that you have there, 17, 29, to 11, and added all this together. So when I add it all together, again, this is the first of my eye charts. Download my slides and you can read these uh, for yourself. What you will notice is that the, the yellow box on here is the road noise. The purple box is the road noise plus the data center plus the substation. And yes, the substation does have its own site or its own amount of noise. Okay, so this chart is on there. So what I did is, okay, let's visualize this. So here's a visualization of, with the, of the yellow boxes from the roads only. You get above 60 decibels here in all of this yellow, yellow area. Think of this the same way you'd look at the weather chart, seeing where it's going to rain. It's kind of the same idea. You would expect a chart like this for, for three major roads coming together in a large interchange. But now let's, let's add in the noise from the data center. You remember that half mile radius on there? Completely encompasses it. What you've got here down to the south, the Highland neighborhood is well inside the range that's 63 to 66 decibels, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never stopping. 
You get up here in the top, this is an undeveloped piece of property. It exceeds 70 decibels. 70 decibels. That's, that's my Dyson vacuum cleaner running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You'll notice that it goes out here into Oak Springs area, a large part of that neighborhood, down here near the North Rock neighborhood. Even these folks that live out here in the quiet, peaceful part of the county, their noise level is going to go way up. So far for the good news. So then what I did is I went, and again, don't try and read this, another one of my eye charts, download the slide and you can look at it. What this is showing is I took all the noise and compared against your town of Warrington noise ordinance. See where there are violations. Each one of these V's is a violation for my 21 sites and the frequency bands. Everything violates between somewhere below 500 hertz to above 4,000 hertz. Remember I said the prime hearing is basically in this range, which is 100% violation at daytime, more than 100% violation, even more at nighttime. Nighttime should be five decibels lower than that. These are all the violations. Okay, so you heard earlier that Amazon had done a noise study, done by a company out here on the, the west end of town called Polysonic. Let me just give you a little quick analysis. The analysis probably took me half an hour to, to read through what they gave us. They improperly interpreted the tabular results in the charts that they presented. They couldn't cite the right noise ordinance, the right parameters. They never mentioned Fauquier County. The isopleth charts, like those colored charts that I showed, uh, they basically don't match basic physics. They change the physics halfway through them. Their higher frequency and lower frequency uh, Plots don't match. I don't know where they got them, what physics they were using, but it's not any physics I ever learned. They misinterpreted the topography, and they misinterpreted day and night noise. And to make it even better, in the middle is a page from some place near Gainesville High School. <laughs> if anybody can explain to me why Gainesville High School is important to the Warrington Data Center, please let me know. But it's in their official report. So basically, what do I conclude? The report is 100% non-credible, it's not even worth the paper it's printed on, and it was electronic. <laughs> it should immediately be rejected by the town as, as just being, what's the engineering word I'm thinking of? Crap. <laughs> so thank you all for listening to me. and. Uh, if, like I say, all these charts are online, let me know. My, web, my email address is in there. You're welcome to send me questions to ask me uh, any more further information. But please download it. Please look at it. And then please let these nice folks who are your public servants know what you think about it. Thank you. Have a great evening. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the show? Our next speaker is my old friend Dave Gibson, who's going to talk to us in detail about the viewshed impacts of the proposed data center. Uh, after degrees from Colorado State University and the Yale School of Environment, uh, he has 40 years of experience with USAID, Chemonics International, and other organizations. He's a longtime volunteer for all kinds of causes in Fauquier County. Dave Gibson. I'm not, I'm not sure it's ever a good idea to follow a, a lecturer, a rocket scientist, and somebody with Spence, Spencer's energy and Julie's prowess. Uh, my, my name is Dave Gibson, and the real reason I'm here is because Dominion wanted to put a power line through my backyard, 200 feet from my house, and then I got to scratching a little bit, and I looked out at the front, and lo and behold, I could see the Amazon Center from my front door when it goes up, or if it goes up. It's almost two miles away. I, 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 it was a sandwich job, you know, you know that old joke. Um, just, just astounding. So I didn't have much of an alternative, but I've been involved with uh, CFFC for, for a while. Um, and I'm also with the Ag, Ag Forest Style Advisory Committee here in the county. Uh, so I, I really felt it was absolutely uh, mandatory to get involved in this one. 
Uh, luckily, Dominion backed off the, the power line in the backyard. It was what, the first option that fell off the table. <laughs> option. Uh, Amazon hasn't fallen off the table yet, though, um, and I think we know what that means. So we're still here. Um, the graphic representations are mine. They're not very pretty. If you brought a crayon coloring set with you, you could probably do better. But uh, trying to add perspective to this, which is what Amazon should have done from the beginning and still has not, are important. Uh, all of these graphics are actually to scale, so it's not just exaggeration, okay? Um, let's, let's do something that's maybe fun and it'll be interesting. I've, let's do a view shed analysis in a minute or two, okay? Follow along with me if you might. That's three miles wide, three miles tall. The concentric circles are one mile apart. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this kind of computational capability is owned and operated by the town and the county. Both have ArcGIS, full versions, very, very competent staff. Haven't seen any of this work yet, though. Uh, but it's also available on your, your child's iPad or whatever kind of computer you have at home. And you can actually get a voluntary license. It doesn't cost you one penny. And you can do this analytic yourself. Um, when we take that, oh, and we add the town of Warrington, just to make sure we've got the proper perspective. And we say, oh, well, give me the overlay of those areas. The green areas are the view sheds that I could see from Amazon, or theoretically where Amazon can see out, uh, three miles out. Um, it, 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 it looks like a lot, and, and it is. Um, that's the unobstructed view shed. I won't tell you if you get out of your car or out of your house in any of those places with green that you're actually gonna be able to see it because they are based on physical topography only and they do not include vegetation or structures, okay? But those green areas are where it's possible based on topographic information where you will see at some point, maybe you gotta move a foot to the left or a foot to the right, maybe you need to go up to the second floor or maybe you move, make sure you wait until the tree leaves come down which our friends at Amazon failed to do. They decided they'd do their view shed analysis, AKA balloon test. Uh, they heard it up along, as we heard last night, I think they did it because, well, it was time to do it. Gosh, let's do it before the leaves fall down, right? So, so when we take that view shed analysis and we go to the, the county and we say, okay, show me the points, the locations of every household and every business in the county, and put them underneath or on top of that view shed analysis. And lo and behold, what do I get? Those, all of those areas in, in pink, if you're colorblind, I apologize. Uh, but that's, those are the areas you get. And, and the neat thing, oops, there we go. Well, that was the first time I did that incorrectly, but well, the, the point was there are 4,094 residences and businesses potentially able to see the Amazon site. I'm not saying all of them will. I'm sure a lot of them won't. A lot of them have vegetation that hasn't been measured for 10 years, but it, it's all there. It's up to the, the bad luck and, and inclement weather and whatever, but, but it's the potential's there. That's 4,094. Out of the 4,094, and I wish I could go backwards, but I don't think I can. Um, maybe I can. No, I can't. Right? I can't. Uh, the bottom button goes back? Okay. Thank you very much. Should have been, should have been trained on this equipment, I guess. Uh, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's pretty revealing. Uh, 2,395 are in the town of Warrington. 1,699 are outside of the town of Warrington. My good friend, Dr. Liver, made a, a, a point a moment ago that so far, nobody is looking outside the town of Warrington although the majority of the view shed impacts and potentially the majority of the sound impacts will be outside of the town. Okay, let, let's, if you follow me along with that, surfaces, residences, sort the two of them and you get the thing, you get the picture, you just did more work than the group that did the view shed analysis with the famous balloon test. They were, they were at the, uh, the, the uh, Planning Commission meeting last night, 
And they said, well, they never identified the businesses or residents that were inside the view shed. I almost fell over. So let's bring that a little bit closer to home and let's talk about what they did and what they did not do. Um, inappropriate study to begin with, balloon tests are normally used for archeological and cultural resource assessments. They're used a lot by US government agencies. They're not generally used for looking at buildings in the middle of woods or up on a, on a crescent up, uh, above a town. Uh, they used the wrong height. They, they used the original height that was included in the original uh, application of 37 feet. But as far as we know, that, that's now grown to 57 feet or 56.9 feet. Uh, they did it with leafs on. Uh, and, and by the way, there was no analysis whatsoever. When, when I'm involved in, in this kind of an assessment, I usually have an army of people with clipboards that are out trying to meet and conduct interviews with people that might be out there looking at the balloons. Nobody did any analysis. There was absolutely no enumeration. Nothing has been provided other than a handful of pictures. You've seen them in the newspapers. So uh, no, this isn't the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, they should have identified locations. They should have used line of sight analysis, which is available software, which comes from the same source I just looked at. Uh, they refused to update the LIDAR imagery, which is 10 years old, and that shows the vegetation and building structures. It, they didn't, they, it, it's a 25 or $30,000 procurement, but they decided they'd go with the old stuff. Really? Aren't we worth twenty-five or $30,000? I, I suspect that the legal team probably gets that in a week. Anyway. Uh, there was no consultative process. There's been more consultative process with our friends at Dominion so far, who've had multiple outreach meetings, than with Amazon. Nobody from Amazon has met in a public forum yet. Matter of fact, not yet. Okay, if we take that same thing and we drop it down to, to Warrington, the numbers are a little less exciting, but, but they're there. There's 417 businesses and residents inside that 2,500 or let's call it a half a mile from the Amazon Center, that's their uh, schematic. Uh, those are folks that, as Dr. Liver said a moment ago, are in the zone. I'm not talking about noise, I'm talking about view shed. Uh, and we see a huge number of people that are gonna be able to see this. Uh, it's astounding as a matter of fact. But, but there's never been any reference to all of the rest of those people. Amazon can't seem to find its way across Blackwell Avenue to the giant parking lot. That's just kind of amazing. I, you go to, maybe they don't like, maybe they prefer Safeway, I don't know, but they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not even coming close. Some of the topographic features make this the worst place you could ever put anything like this. It sits on basically a ridge top. It sits on top of Cedar Run Watershed, which is a flood zone. Uh, but more importantly, the sound goes both directions. And if you happen to be between those two forks of 17 or Lee Highway, like up in Oak, Oak, uh, Oak, Oak Springs, you're, you're right in the funnel. Now, maybe the good news is they're gonna put a, 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 a substation there. And the walls of the substation might block some of that noise, but from what I can tell, most of the people at Oak Springs are actually above that. Uh, so you're gonna get an awful lot of it anyway. Uh, but you may not see it, but you may hear it. So uh, it's a bad place, and that's what I'm gonna keep coming back to. Thank you. Uh, even worse, um, they decided they're gonna take the vegetation out, and if they put the substation in the way we think they will, the way they said they will, uh, you're gonna take down all that forest that does whatever buffering you've got. Uh, so not only are you gonna see it, you're gonna hear it again. So. When we look at that, uh, we, we can't help but think, wow, how, how, could they make this worse? And I don't think so is the answer. I really don't think so. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, they, they found a place in the town that's elevated already. They're gonna elevate the, the base grade 15 more feet before they start building, before they pour any concrete. And the thing's gonna be up by, uh, let me see, we're gonna be up at, uh, 543 feet, we're way above where it is right now. 
so who knows how big it's going to be, how well you're going to be able to see it. But I guarantee it's going to be more impressive once they do it, if we let them do it. Uh, let's bring that even a little bit closer. Let's, somebody mentioned the new town. I think it was Kevin. Uh, the, the bottom line is that this is an anchor property of the new town district. Uh, but it occupies 35% of the new town district. And without those, that 35% or that 40 acres, the new town district, I would argue, is not viable. It will continue to be more, more strip malls. Nobody's ever going to go in there. Who would, what developer would come in and put townhouses or commercial development on the lee side of a 70, 60, I, decibel belching, you know, dragon. I, I don't think I would. I mean, I, I, I may go to down, the, down the hill to Safeway and start shopping, you know. Uh, but, but this is what the town said it was going to be. They're proposing right now, or the applicant is proposing to the town, to be more clear, that they're going to take 35% of that away. I wonder really what's going to be worth saving in, in the new town district. Not much is the answer. 35% will disappear. Um, I'm going to close with some, 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 some comments and some asks. Um, a, a viewshed analysis is not, not difficult to do. It does require time. It does require technology. Oh, by the way, all the technology that's used for all of the graphics I've shown so far is actually processed on Amazon. Amazon web services, right? We should always be clear Amazon is not Amazon Web Services. That's just one company in the, the Amazon group, right? We're talking about Amazon Web Services here today. It's not the people that deliver three or four packages to you a day. Uh, it's, it, it, it's good to make that distinction, I guess. Uh, but Amazon's better, better known. Okay. So the, 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 the bottom line here, um, They've underestimated the, the view sheds completely, just as they've underestimated the noise, they've, everything they've done, they've underestimated. They provided low quality analyses, incomplete analyses, things that wouldn't stand up. Any t I've looked at thousands of environmental impact reviews. This one wouldn't have made it past three or four, page three or four. I wouldn't have gotten through the executive summary, I would have sent it back. So these guys are not provide, they're not taking the time or spending the money other than to have the, the legal team come and answer questions and tell us how we ought to do our business. They just keep coming back. I heard last night Mr. Foote say that, oh, well, don't worry about it. We're going to provide you with some uh, language for the new, uh, the, the, the requirements, I think was the term he used. Conditions. The what? Conditions. The conditions. Just like that. Oh, don't worry. I'll provide you with some of the conditions. I'll write them for you and send them over. Really? An open mic. Really? That was interesting. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, it, it was also very interesting that the one planning commissioner uh, that, that said that it was his last meeting last night is actually the fellow that lives closest to the Amazon Center, about 850 feet. Uh, he would have gotten all the decibels John could cook up uh, and all the viewshed I could cook up. Uh, he's moving to Culpeper, to, to, the, to the mountains, so no one will ever be on top of him again. Now, I, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that was... You know, fact check that. Um, the economics of this have, have been, oh, well, our economic impact, our study impact, everything is right there in this parcel. And they've forgotten about everything else that's around it. They've forgotten about poets walk down the street that'll see it 24 7, hear it 24 7. About people that get out of their cars at the giant, you'll hear it, you'll see it. Everybody around here will feel it. So it's not as simple as just seeing it. We're hearing it. You're going to, it it's going to be part of the whole experience of Warrington, right? Um, the comprehensive plan has been ignored by Amazon, uh, and we're just hoping that the, 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 the commissioners uh, and, the, and the council will be a little more serious about this. I think they can be. I, I'm glad to hear we've got a great audience here this evening, but, but we need to do better. So I've already said it's impossible to find a site that's more inappropriate than this site for a day. You could put anything up here, and it would be more appropriate than this. A little traffic, a little more traffic, a little, but hey, you could turn this into a park. Mr. Bezos, give us this. We'll turn it into a park. 
It'd be wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. You know, we'll, we'll, give you some, we'll give you some tax credits for that. Anyway, look, at the, the three asks, complete a, do a comprehensive viewshed analysis. Don't, don't send us this junk. Uh, expand the focus beyond Blackwell Avenue. Make sure you're thinking beyond the box. We don't like the box very much. Uh, and, and the town, and arguably the town and county, really need to be thinking about the impact in a broader way. But I'd like the town to really, really consider whether this, uh, the new town district really can survive this impact. Uh, and my last, my last three things are, are very straightforward. To deny, deny, deny this application. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Um, I'm going to invite my colleague Julie Bolthouse back up to speak briefly. We do have a couple of things to keep in mind. The town council is going to be voting on this special use permit, but it will not be the last data center we deal with. And so she's going to talk a little bit about the camel's nose under the tent. That's a great, that's a great intro, because that's exactly what I'm going to be covering, is that this is just opening the door to more data centers in Warrington. And I know that's a big statement, but I'm going to try to explain to you why I think that's the case. So this map is town of Warrington. The red hatched area is the boundary line adjustment in consideration right now. This is still under discussion and no decision has been made yet, but I want you to see it in context of also these parcels that have expressed interest in data center development. So the purple parcels up there that you see um, have expressed interest in data center development. Two of them in particular have started to advertise in data center real estate articles. So the Dobson properties, if you're familiar with those, one of them is across Route 17 right up here. And the old wire factory property, if you're familiar with that, it's 37 acre parcel. Oh, what happened? How did my slide go back when I'm not even touching it? What's going on? I'm not touching anything. <laughs> it is. Amazon has hacked my presentation, guys. All right. I was worried about walking across the dark parking lot. I should have been worried about my presentation. Okay. So. Anyways, these two sites would equate to 1.3 million square feet of data center space using local averages that could uh, require 200 megawatts of additional power. Yeah, no, I'm using this one still. This one. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Anyways. Anyways. Um, so, uh, I've got distracted. I'm sorry. We already discussed the existing landowners that were in the map and, and that they have already advertised some of those properties in real estate magazines. The next reasons that I think it's very likely that we'll get multiple data centers though is first of all, what was in that FOIA text that I talked to you about earlier. Um, the zoning text amendment that we went through in that early summer of 2021 included an adjustment down from 25 acres, which it initially was the minimum parcel size, down to 20 acres. And that was explicitly to accommodate the Dobson parcel. Um, that was because that parcel across 20, or across 17 is only 21 acres. So to capture that, they reduced the minimum parcel size. The other thing was the old wire factory was mentioned in one of the emails, and it described it as a future potential data center location um, once fiber is extended to the site. And the town manager responded to questions raised by um, some of the uh, council members and commissioners uh, about is this the only data center on the, on the table right now? And she responded, yes, currently, but basically more are expected in that eight to 10 year time frame. It was a little choppy of a sentence, so it's not completely clear what she meant, but it said eight to 10 year time frame. The third reason we think more are likely is that data centers generally like to cluster and share resources. So things like your HAVAC services, your security services, electrical, um, it, they benefit from having multiple buildings um, and campuses to share those services, services. They also benefit from sharing infrastructure like recycled water, um, like they do up in Data Center Alley. A lot of those data centers are on the broad run wastewater treatment facility and 
transmission lines and fiber. And fourth, it sets a precedent and a standard for future applications in the town. So the final reason, though, really is revenue. No locality, nowhere, not that I've ever heard of at least, has ever said, we have enough revenue. We don't need any more revenue. We're good. No, that doesn't ever happen. No matter how much revenue a locality has, they always find a way to spend it and to continue to seek out more. Um, point, point, uh, case in point, Loudoun County, they collect a very large amount of revenue from their 27 million square feet of data center space, but yet the real estate taxes collected from residential have not gone down. They've gone up. But it's not just the localities that seek revenue from data center development. This slide is actually from Dominion's 2022 second quarter earnings presentation, and they point to the booming data center market as a key to growth projections. Those growth projections are directly tied to generation and transmission infrastructure to meet the high demand from data centers. So this graph shows 2019, 2020, 2021, and 22 projections for peak load through 2031. The purple line, though, is the 2022 projection and shows a estimated 2,600 megawatt increase five years from now. And they directly attribute that to data center growth in the region. So invest in Dominion. That was the point of my slides. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> big picture, just stepping back for a second, data centers are large load users. A data center typically uses between 30 to 90 megawatts of power. For scale, one megawatt serves 250 homes at peak usage, according to Dominion. And many of my colleagues say that that's actually a very low estimate. Um, so what that means is that a small 30 megawatt data center uses more than two times the amount of power as all the homes in the town of Warrington. They, they are heavy electric users. As the grid grows, though, and data centers request more electric service, the utility upgrades or extensions of transmission lines and infrastructure um, also grows. So the more we put these heavy load users on there, the more we have to put in the pipes, basically, to get that energy up to those um, users. And then we also have to have additional energy new generation f for the um, power for those facilities. And that comes in the form of things like utility scale solar, as my picture shows, but also wind, and nuclear, and natural gas. So. What is the result? Loudoun County currently has 27 million square feet of approved data center space and several million under development and even more in the approval pipeline, including a push to open up even more in the Dulles Cloud South area. This map, though, is actually of Gainesville and Prince William County, and the purple hatched area um, is the data center overlay. So you can see that most of the data center development, which is that gray and red area, um, is within that data center overlay, but some of it is not. The gray parcels are um, ones that are already constructed, and the red parcels are ones that have been approved but have not been uh, constructed. Currently, Prince William has 5 million of existing data center space and 16 million approved but not built yet and in the pipeline. Now, what I want to draw your attention to on this map, though, is the transmission line. So these, these black lines right here are the transmission lines, but I want to draw your attention to this one right here going along the I-66 corridor. That line is the line that was extended out to the Haymarket Amazon data center. And this red blob right here did not exist until after that transmission line was built out to the Amazon data center in Haymarket. And then they saw an opportunity to apply to get that area rezoned, even though it's outside of the data center overlay, to allow for additional data centers and co to connect up and take advantage of that 230 kV line. So what I'm trying to show here is that Dominion and the data center industry are in a self-perpetuating cycle, basically. As I said before, data centers tend to cluster around infrastructure like transmission lines and fiber 
and when data centers are approved in rural areas where, there, where that infrastructure isn't immediately available, like here in Warrington and also out in that Haymarket site, the infrastructure is built out to them because Dominion is obligated to provide service if the, if the use is approved. Um, so this infrastructure is um, then available for more data centers to link into. So this is an image you might have read in the newspaper about this tiny little project called Digital Gateway in Prince William County. It's a 27 million square foot data center site on 2,100 acres. Remember that the site here in Warrington is 220,000 uh, square feet. So we're talking 27 million square feet. That is more than all that is approved in Loudoun County currently, which is the, um, the height of data center development in the world is focused in, in Loudoun County right now. To visualize that, that's the equivalent of 144 Walmart supercenters on land that is currently rural. There is no public water there, there is no sewer, there is nothing there. It was planned to remain uh, agricultural. It's on a two-lane rural road and there's nothing in the comp plan or the zoning that indicated that that should be a place to develop. However, the, the primary justification is the existence of those transmission lines that go through Digital Gateway. So basically the landowners are saying, hey, the line's already here. We might as well be able to take advantage of it because we've lost some of our property value. Now, Dominion has stated that both lines from Warrington to Blackwell and the one from Wheeler to Blackwell, so both your north line and your south line, um, could be needed if more data centers are approved in Warrington. Now, I have faith that Fauquier would never, ever, ever consider something as outrageous as Digital Gateway. But it is still alarming to look at how much land could be in close proximity to those lines if they were built out. The other thing to keep in mind is once they build those lines as 230 KVs, they very easily can come in and upgrade those lines to 500 KVs so they could get larger. What we are seeing in Northern Virginia is the unintended results of an exploding industry. Remember the golden goose that I mentioned earlier? Well, we now have too many geese. Remember uh, where data centers were once um, seen as benign revenue generators for localities, they're now becoming prolific and very impactful. They have always been noisy, unattractive, fenced in dead zones with little employment and use high levels of electricity and sometimes high levels of water. But now they are being built in high numbers in close proximity to residential developments with little thoughtful planning about potential impacts. And the result is transmission lines cutting through people's property, through, the, through streams, through forests, through historic resources, and the noise and visual impacts on those adjacent communities that we just spoke about. Fauquier County has several data centers currently that don't seem to be particularly problematic. You've got OVH up in Ben Hill, you've got the Warrington Training Center data centers, and you've also got the approved but unbuilt Remington Technology Park. The Amazon data center, though, is different because it is highly impactful to the adjacent communities, would require a new transmission line to be built, and a transmission line that would impact town residents and county residents, and it would likely induce further development um, in the town, that further data center development in the town. So point, what we are saying to the town is not that this is not the right place, that the council should look very carefully at what they're doing and not invite the flock of geese to roost in Warrington. Thank you. All right, the hour's getting late. Everybody stretch a little bit. We have uh, one more presenter to wrap things up, but before we get there, I think we have three testimonials, I've been informed, in the audience, and I don't know how I'm supposed to recognize them, so somebody from our team help me out. Uh, Mike Fultz is going to be first. Mike Fultz is going to be first, okay. Is this on? It is. It's on. Perfect, thank you. Uh, can you step to my image? Uh, Mike Fultz, I, uh, I, I, I formed Protect Fauquier 
in the uh, late winter, early spring, when nobody was talking about power lines, and uh, and I couldn't get a whole lot of interest, and I wrote a snarky email to uh, uh, Holder Trumbo, uh, and, and and Holder gave me an education about power lines in Fauquier County. Decided I needed to do something, and and the only thing I could think of do at that point was create a Facebook page called Protect Fauquier. And then went out and bought the URL, so so another volunteer uh, could could create a, a web presence. And, and the organization has grown; it's grown substantially. I think on the on the uh, Facebook page, there's over 900 people on that Facebook page uh, who have joined specifically because they oppose the power lines and and they live in the county. So. I was asked why I picked the picture that's, uh, that's the, the backdrop to the Protect Fuck Your Facebook page. And, and this picture, if you see this antenna right here, uh, and this lovely landscape, and this nice barn, uh, it, it's, it's just a, a short piece of one of those lines drawn on the map. And it would put the 110 foot towers, which would be about to that point, on that, on that tower, it would bring them from the north, curve them around this, this cell phone tower, and bring them out this way. I mean, and this is just probably about a two mile stretch. And in March, my wife and I went out to drive all of these lines and take a look. And it was amazing the number of lines that cut people's yards in half. That, that, you know, almost go over top of their homes. That will divide communities. It's just wrong. I mean, and, and, and so off, you know, off we, we've self-organized. The Protect Fock here now is just a self-organized group of, of concerned citizens. Uh, no political agenda. No, most of us have no background in this. We're just concerned citizens from the county, from the town, we have folks in Protect Fauquier from, from every corner of Fauquier County. Folks out in the western side of Marshall are concerned because they feel power lines can be, be brought through Marshall uh, and, and headed east. Folks in the south of the county are concerned. They already have power lines. They don't want another set of 500 kV lines running through the south county. So this is our little group is organized. And, and, and we're just here uh, to, to say that the data center is certainly the wrong place. Just got to drive to Blackwell Road. Common sense tells us that's the wrong place. And to protect our county from Dominion adding power towers and, and power lines with the 230 kV or 500 kV uh, through our county. Thank you. Thank you. Laura Presley. The left hand button, push it in till it lights up. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, those are pictures of my home in my neighborhood. My name is Laura Presley. My husband, Kyle Tyron, and I live there. We remodeled that lovely little house, completely, completely brought it back from the dead. We live in a one street neighborhood of equestrian residential farmettes. And the power towers will run, if you see the house in the picture there, power towers will actually run from that back corner where that house is, just on the other side of the property line, right in the middle of my neighbor's property. Uh, I estimated, looking at Dominion's map, we'll see about four towers just in that one street neighborhood. Uh, I'm going to read the rest of this. I am your neighbor, and I bought my small farm at in 2009. It had been run down and abandoned. My husband and I poured our savings and hard work into lovingly restoring and remodeling the house and land. Kaya is now retired and we have adapted to one income. From the moment I opened the Dominion site map showing the proposed route through the middle of my neighbor's property, cutting across the ridge that runs behind both of our properties, through a mature hardwood forest, I felt as if my knees would buckle and my stomach would fail me. My heart went into high gear. Every pause, skipped beat, and swiggling sensation in my chest sent fear and adrenaline through me. My mind started racing, pictures and thoughts, memories and dreams. 
and one phrase, a quote from the movie, you've got mail. Whatever else anything is, it ought to begin by being personal. This is personal. My hope is that we start a tsunami of emotion that shows the town council the magnitude of grief and loss that the proposed data center and transmission line routes is causing to our communities. For many of us, there will be no financial compensation for the lost value of our homes and land. For all of us, the transformation of the Fauquier way of life we value so highly will have begun. Our view sheds will forever change, and not for the better. Just take a trip up to Gainesville. You get an eye-opening view of the future from the parking lot at Cabela's. I like Cabela's, by the way. <laughs> the transmission towers have multiplied and crisscrossed the skies from every point of view. The trees and green spaces have disappeared. As for me and Kaya, we live in a one-street neighborhood of modest older homes <coughs> and neighbor lots. We are a residential equestrian neighborhood. My home sits in the valley between two hills. There's a pond where the geese and ducks nest and raise their young. The wildlife is proliferating as surrounding farms are sold and subdivided. This past year, we even had a mountain lion visit the pond and a bald eagle scavenging at deer carcass. The mature hardwood forest rises, rises up the ridge from the back edge of the pond. Dominion plans to drive these huge towers next door to us. They will go through the center of my neighbor's land and over our driveway. Then they cross over the cul-de-sac in another neighbor's driveway and head up the hill. Once at the top of the hill, it will cross just feet away from another neighbor's front door and cross Grays Mill Road. The path will tear out the forest our areas all along our section of the route. They also stand directly in the flight path of the geese who travel between my pond and Lake Brittle, as do the several species of duck. The beauty of the home I spent a lifetime to achieve will be forever altered for the worse. I am the daughter of a salesman and a nurse. A baby sat down with brothers and a child, then worked with my mother every day of the week cleaning new homes from the age of 12 until I turned 16, at which time I started an after school job in a daycare center. I worked my way through undergrad. That took 10 years. I'm still paying off my graduate education. I bought my property, which was abandoned and run down in 2009. Renovations were completed in 2017. The towers will permanently wipe out the value of our property. This is our American dream, and it will be destroyed by the greed of a few who stand and profit financially in the extreme. Town Council needs to hear from every person the real costs of the project that will be borne by the many of us. I did not choose to commute 45 miles to my job to live in the middle of an industrialized area. I chose to live among the natural beauty of Fauquier County. This is personal. David Wynn. This is the last testimonial, then we'll do a wrap up and then we'll go to questions and answers. David? Um, my name is Dave Wynn. I live just outside of Warrenton by the Falkier High School in a neighborhood called Waterloo North, which is located on View Tree Mountain. View Tree Mountain is about 1,100 feet in elevation. Um, it's where the Warrenton Training Facility is, the Warrenton Training Center on Bear Ball Road. I'm on the opposite side of the mountain. I'm about 750 feet. The elevation is about 1,100 feet. The data center that is there today is at about probably the 800 foot level. So there's a 0.9 miles between me and the data center, which is at Warrington Training Facility. Most people don't know that. It's an Amazon facility. It was built in 2015. And I'm protected by a mile of forest, a mountain, and I can hear it at night. I can no longer sleep with my windows open because it's a constant drumming noise. It sounds like the old uh, passenger airplanes that were propeller driven when they warmed up on a tarmac. It's, it's the HVAC noise, the fans and the motors. <clears throat> so I've got a mile of, of uh, solid force between me and it and a mountain and I hear it at night. The problem is at night, it's not in the daytime in my opinion. Um, the daytime noise is is shattered by ambient noise, traffic, and so on and so forth. It's at night when you're trying to sleep. Um, their own application admits data center wider than background noise. 
except during evening hours. It repeats that four times in, in four of their five sound zones. I'll say it again, that is sooner quieter than background noise, except during evening hours when you're trying to sleep. John Foote, their attorney, in his own application for the SUP said, these HPC noises really no different than a, than a human conversation. Okay, a human conversation, conversation in midday is not distracting. Have that human conversation outside your bedroom window at 3 a.m. and try and sleep through that. I like to sleep with my windows open whenever possible. I can no longer do that. It's too noisy. I hear that data center. Now, I'm in a city rural area of one to one and a half acre lots. They're proposing this data center on a 500 foot tall hill. The building is now 57 feet tall, not 37 in their original application because 37 only applies to the ordinance of the concrete wall. It does not apply to the 500 tons of HVAC on the roof and the, and the screening, the screening wall. That brings it up to 57 feet, not 37. To give you an idea, the Walmart is 22 feet tall. Imagine three Walmarts in height. The air conditioning unit's 500 tons is on the roof. Your HVA system at your house is between one and two tons. So when you're outside and you're trying to picnic or whatever, and your air conditioner unit's running, it's hard, hard to have a conversation. Imagine 500 of those air conditioning units. These are industrial size HVAC, uh, HVAC units, and they're about the size of a, uh, a shipping container. Most data centers have between 50 and 100 of them. So the noise is there. I live it. I feel it. They, the presentations talk about 2,500 feet distance from the data center. I think that's conservative. As I said, I'm 0.9 miles. I'm about 5,000 feet, and I hear it through forest over a mountain. This is in the center of town. People from a mile away are going to hear it. What's a mile away? To the north is the, is the Warrington Reservoir. To the east is Route 605. To the west is uh, Gold Cup. And to the south is Metz Lane that takes the highway across uh, 211. So that's the big area it's going to impact. It's a lot more than uh, 500 feet or 2,500 feet. It's more like a mile. I can live, I live it. I can tell you that's the case. Um, and also, you know, again, this particular site is the tallest site on that edge of town. It's 500 feet. Everything around it is below that. It's between 400 and 450 feet. And then you have a 57 foot tall building with 500 tons of HVAC on the roof and the noise is going to be broadcast. Why do they put uh, safety alarms on high poles so that you can hear them, right? That's what this is going to be like. Uh, also their, their noise, I went through their submission for the SUP on page 212 of the submission. Uh, at the very back, all the bad stuff's always at the back of the application. <laughs> I, I, I read a lot of these applications, they're always in the back. Under noise, item 15, page 212, they didn't even mention the HVAC. It's, it's not even mentioned here. You can read it yourself. It's not mentioned. Uh, so, oh, and one last thing. The comp plan identifies this site as the only vacant site in the new town center of the comp plan. It's the only vacant site, 40 acres of vacant land. So they're talking about this site. The comp plan talks about this should be a live, work, play area. <laughs> live, work, play. Let's play, let's live, let's work right there. Okay? Right next to the data center. So it's, it's contrary to the, to the comp plan, it should not be there, and frankly, in my opinion, there is no appropriate place in the town, in the urban area, for that center. There just is not. It's a compact urban environment. All right, and for, and for a final wrap-up, before we go to questions, I'll invite uh, Spencer back up. 
You guys have been an amazing audience tonight. I swear we did a run through of this on Sunday in about half the time. Clearly we're all playing to your reactions in the live audience. So thank you for hanging with us. So just a quick wrap up to just cover the key points again. And you all got a, um, a handout. I'm not gonna read this word for word right here, but you all got a handout with the key takeaways. So when you walk away from this and say, what the heck was that again? Or the key points, they're there. And I'm just gonna to touch on the key points that we've covered tonight with some visuals to drive these home. So first, Amazon's data center is inconsistent with the town's 2040 comp plan, as we just heard again, and the special use permit should be denied. Town officials clearly have more work to do because get, having this data center sacrifices the 2040 new town character district for this. That's a bird's eye view of the data center and all those HVAC equipments on top as Dave was just talking about, lovely. Um, number two, town officials have not been transparent. They have cut us out of the process and so we need to insert ourselves in. Have your voice heard, take action. This is the back page of that handout that you were given. It's got the names and contact addresses for the council members. Also, just a reminder, there's an election coming up. Some of these council members um, or some of the ones running and potential mayor candidates running are more in favor of um, proper location for data center use than just being stuck on it's gotta be Blackwell Road. So get involved, take action, have your voice heard. Number three, approving the data center will result in miles of costly above ground, don't believe the hype about underground, above ground, 110 foot tall, steel power towers destroying our town, county, and homes, these monstrosities that will be causing a home loss value according to our analysis based on real actual data of the town and county. This isn't like national averages. This was based on the tax assessed values of the impacted homes along the routes at an average of 88,000 to 136,000 per parcel. Money you will be losing from your property if you're along one of these routes. Number four, the proposed facility will um, produce noise that will be heard, as we just heard, up to two miles away, certainly at least up to one mile away, as Mr. Wynn just testified, um, exceeding Fauquier County and Town of Warrington noise ordinance limits. I just want to drive this home. I think Dave just did a great job of this with his personal testimonial. Um, I was invited on August 29th to participate in a protest in Prince William County about the Tanner Way Amazon data center, where residents there have been miserable as a result of the data center that's within about 600 feet of their homes. Some of the stories there included one story of a family that replaced all of their windows at a cost of about $20,000, and still, after that $20,000 investment, had migraines, still had to move their newborn baby to the basement because the noise and the vibration was so bad, still has been causing some of the neighbors their anxiety, depression, neurological issues, autoimmune issues, the, the list goes on and on. They are living this experience every day. And Amazon now claims they're trying to fix it, but it's an after the fact. We know this is gonna be a problem and we need to stop it before it starts. Number five, view shed impacts are serious and extend well beyond Warrington. As we saw from Mr. Gibson presentation, it goes way beyond just the immediate circle, um, particularly impacting neighborhoods like Oak Springs, Walker Drive, Poets Walk, and more. And lastly, this isn't about just one poorly sited data center in town. It's about opening up the market, really triggering the avalanche for many more to come. Um, as Julie talked about, the cycle there on the left side of the data, new data center drives a need for new transmission lines. Then because there's new transmission lines, oh, we can get more data centers in. Then we build more data centers. Oh, wait, we need more power now. Now instead of a 230 kilovolt, we need a 500 kilovolt. And so it just keeps going. And I just wanted to show, um, I don't know how to use the pointer on this and I'm not gonna try to mess with it, but if you can make out the red border there that's kind of horseshoeing around a neighborhood, that's from a Google Maps view, Thank you, magic. This is um, an area off Linton Hall Road in Prince William County, just right up the road in Gainesville. Two neighborhoods there that have, what is, um, 270 acre, 270 new acres getting proposed to get rezoned to accommodate up to 11 new data centers surrounding homes and schools. This is on top of, by the way, the 400 acres right there, like above it, like where it says University Boulevard and up by Jiffy Lube Live. 
There are at least four schools there, two elementary schools, a middle school, and a high school, including my daughter's high school, um, that all of these data centers will be around. This was supposed to be residential, but if you notice on the right here where it says power lines, that's where the, um, I believe when I first moved to the area, that might have been a 500 kilovolt line, or maybe it was a 230 line. About five to 10, ten maybe 10 years ago, it got upgraded to two 500 kilovolt lines. And now, just like Julie said, because we got all these power lines here, it's like, hey, why make it, why make it houses and be a neighborhood? We can make way more money off data centers. So all the data centers are going in. Those poor people that were among the first to, to develop this area when Prince William was the end of the earth. I grew up in Fairfax County and thought, Prince William? Who lives out in Prince William when I grew up in Fairfax County? And those were among the first neighborhoods to start developing down the Linton Hall corridor, which then developed, uh, which kind of triggered all of the ongoing development around Gainesville and Haymarket, now about to be surrounded by data centers. Their homes will be unlivable. From what we know of the Tanner Way people that are suffering from two data centers, these people are going to be horseshoed by 11. And my point here is to say, we could be next. If this data center is approved on Blackwell Road, we could be experiencing the exact same thing in Warrington and the expansion of Warrington and the surrounding Fauquier neighborhoods. So I ask you, I beg you, go vote and urge the Warrington